What's up guys, Kweslo here, and today we're back for another Blueprinting 101 video. Today we're going to be covering conditional logic in the form of branch statements in Blueprinting and Unreal Engine. Uh, branch statements are basically if statements in like a normal programming language, they give a true or false output based on a condition that you give it. It can be a boolean, it can be whether a number is equal or not, you can kind of put it together in a way that it would match how an if statement would go and then it would branch based on the statement whether it is true or false um, and then you'd link up the logic after that that would be what you would technically put in the if statement. Um, for this tutorial I'm going to make a small little game in our uh, tutorial series project. I'm going to make like a mini soccer field and we're going to set a score and we're going to keep track of how many times the ball ends up in the, um, the scoring area and then it will go back to the you know the middle and it'll respawn in the middle and then We'll go ahead and do that. I'm not going to really show you guys how to do that. We can maybe do that in a different tutorial. Just for this video, I really want to just cover the conditional logic in a scenario in a game where you would maybe want to use conditional logic to determine something like that, right? If you want to, you know, if the maximum score is 30, you want to check if the score is 30, and then that would say be the winning score. So with that being said, let's get into this. All right, so here we are in the engine. I'm going to go ahead and make uh, the small little soccer field real quick. And uh, it's just going to be like a one goal with a ball and a way to keep track of score. And I'm going to program this all up real quick for you. And um, and then I'll go ahead and explain what's going on at the end once I'm done. And uh, yeah, um, that'll be pretty much it. All right, so I finished the coding, and it looks like our ball's kind of moving here, but that's okay. Um, I finished the code for this, and it's really not that crazy, and there's multiple ways showing how branch statements can work. So uh, let me show you. So first things first, uh, we have this cool little ball here. This is our uh, little ball actor, and we go ahead and kick it into the thing, and it will uh, keep track of the score for us, uh, you know. If we can get it into the, the thing, it'll it'll go. <laughs> um, clearly, I'm doing a bad job here. Oh, now we have another one going in. And it's keeping track of our score. You can see it by it printing in the corner. And once it gets to, you know, above three, so we're making sure that it's, like, going to be four. So scores, the score for winning is four. And we're going to go ahead and try to kick it in here. Um, clearly, this I'm not very good at this this game, but this is our game. And we kick it in, and bam, we win. All right, so let me show you the code. So basically, um, we are having we have a ball class that's gonna spawn in the ball. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that. We can worry about spawning actors in another video, but that is something we're doing here. Basically, what we're doing is we have our little goal post here. This is our little goal post, and we check on the overlap. This is in the level blueprint, just to keep it simple. But you can do it in a blueprint class. But to keep things a little simple, we're just doing this in the level blueprint so that way I don't have to worry about making a game mode or anything like that. It gets a little bit crazier from there. So, um, we do this in the level blueprint. We check on overlap of the trigger box, this trigger box here that I made. Um, you can use the ones that are in the previous videos for that, or you can make this, you can follow along, and you could do, probably do this yourself. Um, so we go ahead and we have that. And then we are checking if this ball uh, class, so we have a ball that we made that is in the uh, thing. This will all probably be on uh, GitHub at some point. So you'll be able to download this and check out the code for yourself and see how it works. Um, but we have our little ball that is in our blueprint here. This is the only thing that's in the blueprint this time. Everything else is in a level blueprint. Um, so from there, we check if it the other actor, which is the actor that it went through the trigger box, is um, 
equal to the ball. We're basically just checking the reference if they're both the same. If they are the same, then we'll proceed forward. And this is, again, we're kind of like you have that if else kind of logic, right? So we're checking if this condition is true. And then if it is true, we're proceeding along with our blueprint code, right? If it's not true, well, in this case, we do nothing. We don't want to do anything here. But in other cases, we might. Basically, in the case that's coming up, we are going to want to check if the score is greater than three, right? So that's what we're doing. Um, we increment score, and simply what we're doing is we're checking if the score is greater than three. If the score is greater than three, aka uh, if it is equal to four, which we could change this and check if it's equal. It's probably an easier way to put this. So we'll go ahead and check if it is equal to four, right? Um, it'll basically go through this branch statement again, which is basically checking if this condition is met, then we'll go ahead and print you win. And we'll go ahead and proceed with destroying the ball and then spawning it once more. Or if it is not true, if it is false in this case, we will go through and we'll print a string of the score. So we're printing the number, what the score is to the screen just like we did in the previous video with the first video when we're printing to the screen, we're just doing it with a variable this time, which we covered in the last video. And then we're destroying the actor, which is the ball, the other actor here, and spawning it in once more. Uh, the location in the ball, these are just simply variables of the ball class that I made in the location of where the ball is supposed to spawn. In this case, it's a transform, which means that this is including rotation and scale. But since those don't need to be changed, we just need the location. It is just spawning from the location of the ball. Uh, and that's just basically the same thing here. We could probably condense this into a function and just simply have it spawn, make a spawn function. But we'll cover functions in a future video, not this video that is down the road. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. It's really not that crazy. Uh, and as you can see, branch statements aren't really that complicated. All you're doing is taking a basically a Boolean and checking if it is true or false. If it's false, you do this logic. If it's true, we do this object, uh, this logic, right? And you can even chain uh, branch statements together. If we needed to, we could branch again and we could do something else. In this case, we don't need to, so we don't need any further logic done um, from the statement. And there's also another thing called switch statements, which we'll cover in a future video that can cover multiple cases. So that way you're not chaining branch, uh, branch statements to see uh, if something is true or false. Uh, there are scenarios where you are probably going to be chaining them uh, that I can think of in the future when we get to that. But in this case, we are not. So yeah, that's branch statements. Not that complicated. Um, they're pretty easy to understand. It's just if this condition's met, then we do this. If it's not met, then we do that. If else. That's all it is. It's no different than an if else statement in C or C sharp or whatever programming language you have came from, Java, Python, whatever. It's the same thing. And if you've never programmed before, this is really what this is just an if else statement. If this condition is met, then we do this. Else, we do that. If it's true, we do this. If it's false, we do this really not that complicated and in the scenarios here we're just checking if it is equal if it is equal but you could use booleans too so if you have a boolean value that maybe it's set in a more complex way than just simply equals or something else you could use that in a branch as well it's just a boolean value it even says it right here um for the condition it's just a boolean nothing crazy and we covered booleans in the variable video right it's nothing crazy just a simple Boolean, true or false. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you like the video, leave a like, comment if you have any questions about branch statements. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you want to go recreate this little thing yourself, here's the code. If you would like to just copy it and put it into your own project and kind of see how it works. Uh, it's really not that complicated. Go ahead and pause if you need to take a look. The ball has no code on it. There's no logic here. It's just a ball wrapped in a blueprint so that way we can have it as a class to call from with modified mass and that it is um, you know, movable 
and a few other things here. We'll go through this kind of stuff later when we're making our own actors in future videos. Um, that's probably something I'll cover relatively soon. But in this case, uh, we're simply just covering um, the branch statements in this video. But we'll cover blueprint classes in a future video with more depth. So, yeah. I guess this is it for this video. Um, as I said before, go ahead and comment if you have any questions. Uh, subscribe for more Blueprinting 101 videos. And uh, be sure to leave a like to kind of help the video in the YouTube algorithm. YouTube is a pain in the butt to get your videos to get recommended, especially when you have such a small channel like mine. But, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, and peace out.